What up everybody, it's me, Finch, and I'm back after a bit of a hiatus. I'm really sorry for the break between videos, but I have just moved across the country to a new city, so I'm still settling in, still trying to figure out how I'm gonna be shooting these videos in the new space, but I really wanted to get this video out. It's one that I've been wanting to do for a bit simply because I'm learning it, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping to share some of that information that I've picked up with you. Today, we're gonna be talking about the tarot and specifically the minor arcana um, or the pip cards as they're called, as well as uh, I'll touch briefly on the face cards. This video is uh, targeted for people who have some understanding of the tarot and also some understanding of astrology. Uh, it's not required that you have an astrological background uh, to watch this video. I think even newcomers are gonna get something um, out of this video. So if you're tarot curious or astrology curious, please stick around, watch the video. But I think that if you already have a practice with tarot cards and uh, know some astrology, I think you're gonna get a lot out of this video. I did not know the connection between astrology and the minor arcana uh, until quite recently. So. Uh, I'm hoping that there's other people out there like me who are gonna be surprised to find out that there are a, a deeper correspondences. Um, there's also astrological correspondences to the major arcana or the face cards, but we're not gonna get into that today. Uh, I will do a separate video on the major arcana later. Uh, I think the minor arcana is really interesting and it's it's been a very good way for me to learn more about astrology and learn about the uh, zodiacal wheel, the, the um, signs of the zodiac and their elements and uh, bringing that into the tarot and reading tarot for divination or for other purposes. This video is not meant to replace your existing tarot practice. I, I don't want um, to say that these are the only way, the only true meanings of the cards or anything like that. I think that um, reading cards and any sort of cardomancy uh, is so personal and really about um, what kind of stories can you tell with uh, the cards and how do they resonate with you. And a lot of people have a very intuitive and connected practice with the cards and I think that that's awesome and I don't want to detract from that. I, I hope that people can watch this video and uh, use it at, in addition to whatever their understanding is of their cards. Um, think of this video as supplementary to your current understanding of tarot, but I, I found it to be really helpful in understanding the way the cards are connected. And also understanding that these tarot cards exist in history. Um, these cards were created by people and they, they have symbolic meaning. When we think about tarot cards, most often um, we're thinking about the Rider White deck. That deck in particular was made with specific imagery connected to the Golden Dawn's understanding of the zodiac of tarot. Um, the true history of tarot and cardomancy in general is not clear. While members of the Golden Dawn may claim to know the true initiated meaning of the cards, it's possible that they really only have one interpretation. Uh, the correspondences that I'm gonna be explaining today are the correspondences that the Golden Dawn claimed uh, are the true meaning of the cards. And before them, Eliphas Levi and uh, uh, that Western occult chain of Hermetic teaching, which according to them, uh, you can trace all the way back to ancient Egypt as these being the true and initiated meanings of the, of the cards. Now, whether or not this is the true meaning of the cards, we don't know, but uh, it, it is an interesting interpretation and it certainly was one of the meanings that White was intending when he first designed the Rider White deck. So uh, with that, let's get into it. When we're talking about the minor arcana, what most people mean is the cards two through 10 in every suit, the aces, and then also the face cards or the court cards. These are uh, the cards that are often depicted as the king, queen, knight, and page. Uh, these can also be depicted as the uh, king, queen, prince, and princess. Um, I will be using the terms king, queen, prince, and princess because it makes sense for the interpretation that I'm gonna be explaining today. To begin, let's start with the aces. The aces represent the element of each suit, the totality of that element. For wands, that is fire. For cups, it's water. For swords, it's air. 
and for pentacles, it's earth. It's important to remember we're not talking about literal elements like dirt and water. We're talking about metaphoric elements. These elements have many, many meanings, uh, but they are the basic construct of the universe. In the Kabbalah and the Western Hermetic tradition, the entirety of existence is divided up into belonging into one of these four elements. I plan on getting more into elemental magic and understanding the metaphor of the elements in another video, but for now it's just important to Remember that each one of these suits represents an element and uh, make your own connection to your understanding of what that element means. Similar to the aces of each suit, the court cards also represent within them a microcosm of elements where the king represents fire, the queen represents water, the prince rep represents air, and the princess represents earth. So again, we see this tetragrammaton or the elemental uh, representation of the universe happening within each element. When we look at it this way, we can think of the King of Cups as being the fire in water and the Queen of Cups as being the water of water. So we can see that each element contains within it all four elements again. When interpreting this in a read, uh, we can think of the fire of some element being like the swiftness. So the King of Cups, the fire of water could be like a sudden torrential rain or the crash of a tidal wave. Whereas the queen, the water of water, is the introspective element of water, the placid, uh, unknown depths of water. We can apply this interpretation to any one of the core cards across all the suits. And now for the fun part. If you know a little bit about astrology, then you know that the entire year can be represented as a wheel. Uh, and on that wheel, we can draw the zodiacal signs, the signs of the zodiac. Each one of these signs of the zodiac rules over 30 degrees of this wheel. That uh, 30 degrees can be split into chunks of 10 degrees or deacons as they're known. Each one of the minor arcana, the, the numbered cards, two through 10, can be mapped to one of these deacons in each suit. The two, three, and four correspond to the uh, three deacons of the cardinal sign, five, six, and seven uh, map to the fixed sign, and eight, nine, and 10 map to the cardinal sign. With this understanding of the card's correspondences, we can begin to map these cards to the wheel. Starting in Aries, we can map the cards two, three, and four of the suit of wands. Since Aries is the cardinal sign of fire, we know to be uh, using the cards two, three, and four of wands. Next is Taurus. Uh, so that is the fixed sign of earth. So we will continue with five, six, and seven of pentacles. And next is Gemini, uh, which is the mutable sign of air. So we will use the eight, nine, and 10 of swords and so on and so forth until we've mapped the entire zodiacal wheel. This is a really elegant way of understanding the progression of the cards and seeing how the suits weave in and out uh, through the seasons of the year. Once we've laid our cards out in this circle, we can then begin to uh, apply the, what's known as the Chaldean order. The Chaldean order is like an ancient hierarchy of planets. Um, it comes from Hellenistic astrology, which is like ancient Greece, and it could even have roots all the way back to Babylonian uh, astrology. Uh, it's old, but it basically relates to the seven planets or planetary bodies that we could see from Earth from a long time ago. So that's Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the Sun, Venus, Mercury, and the Moon. Um, each one of these planetary bodies would move through the sky at a different speed. So in that order, uh, they would move um, from slowest to fast, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the Sun, Venus, Mercury, and the Moon. Uh, we see this order repeat itself in all sorts of occult <laughs> texts. Um, so get comfortable with the Chaldean order. Uh, it's powerful stuff, and if for a lot of uh, numerology, um, this is one of the reasons why the number seven is considered very, like, magical, um, because of these seven uh, celestial bodies. So we can take this Chaldean order and map it onto the zodiacal wheel. Again, each planet mapping to one of these uh, cards. So starting with Aries, we would start with Mars. Um, and continue around in that same order. So the Three of Wands uh, is ruled by the Sun, the Four of Wands ruled by Venus, so on and so forth. With this, we now have a full 
understanding of the cards and where their meaning comes from. Take, for example, the Six of Wands. This is a card that represents victory, achievement, success, but it's also a card that's ruled by Jupiter in Leo. And we can see that Jupiter in Leo uh, is like the lion, the king exalted. Jupiter, the planet of great benevolence, success, and victory. We can see that the card and the astrological interpretation of Jupiter and Leo are in accord. If you're comfortable with astrology and understanding how the planets correspond and relate to the signs of the zodiac, you can deepen your understanding and your interpretation of each card in a reading. You can also, for example, use this method to um, hone in on a very specific season uh, or even a date if you have questions about when a time for action would be good because each one of these deacons corresponds to a time in the year. While we're talking about astrology and the cards, I want to give you a reading that you can use for divination that is uh, connected to astrology. This is a reading that comes from Liber 78. I will insert the actual name of this book here. <laughs> Um, but I found it to be a really interesting one, and I think it's one that will really be enhanced with a deeper understanding of astrology. We can look at the astrological wheel as also having 12 houses, and each one of these houses corresponds to some element of our lives, of the world around us. If you have a good understanding of these houses, you can apply them to a, a tarot spread. First, have the person, the querent, or the person asking the question, Pick a face card uh, to represent them. This is known as a significator. And we're going to use this to find where they exist in the wheel uh, uh, of the, the zodiac. So once they've chosen a card that they feel represents them, shuffle it back into the deck, have them shuffle it, have them cut the deck, whatever you want to do. Uh, and then deal out the cards, all of the entire deck, into 12 piles. Connect each pile to one of the uh, houses of the zodiac. Then uh, begin to look through the piles for the card that your querent picked as the significator. If you were to find this card in, say, the seventh house, then you know that the true um, question that they're asking or the true problem that they're struggling with has to do with relationships. If it were in the second house, it would have to do with their material belongings, perhaps business matters. So you can apply this uh, in your reading and in your interpretation. Then I'd spread the, the cards out in that pile and read them in the direction that, that the significator is facing. You can use this to tell a story to yourself um, uh, about the queer and about the question being asked and express that as the answer to your question. This is a pretty simple, but very, very effective way of reading cards. And it's one that connects the cards to their higher meaning of representing parts of the zodiac. So uh, I hope you found this useful and uh, I hope you all try it for yourselves. I think this will be a shorter one than usual, but I hope you all found it as interesting as I do. It's a really fascinating topic. Uh, I want to go in deeper to more of the initiated meanings of the tarot in a future video. Uh, there's, there's also astrological correspondences to the major arcana and also Kabbalistic correspondences to the major arcana as we can map them on the tree of life. Um, but I, like I said, I'm still getting settled in my new place. I think I'm going to touch on some more sigil magic subjects in my next video. Um, I also want to talk about uh, the imagination and how we can use that in our magical practice and what is the imagination anyway. So I've got some stuff that I'm working on. If there's another magical topic you want me to touch on or revisit, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for all the positive response to my Enochian magic video. Uh, I know a lot of people are wanting me to go more in depth there and I will. Uh, it's just, that's a really heavy topic and it's gonna take me some more time to get more research in to talk about the elemental tablets and the planetary tablets and all that stuff. But I promise I'll come back to it. Um, please like and subscribe. I hope to get back to my schedule of about one video a month um, by the time fall rolls around. So give me a little time here, uh, but I will hopefully get out a new video soon and i hope that you all enjoy uh learning with me <laughs> um, again magic's for everyone i will see you on the path and um, keep seeking everyone i'll catch you next time